What's up divas and what's up divos? It's your girl April and of course you guys know it is Real Talk Wednesday. So I am back. I don't have a drink today because I didn't make it to the store in time. You know they sell liquor at the grocery store here but I was busy getting dinner ready for my fam. So no drink. But maybe later. But anyway, so the hair that I'm rocking is actually the same hair that I've worn in quite some videos now, which is the Best Lace Wigs Kinky Straight Hair. This is the unit that I created, and I will tell you this, ladies, I love this hair. I washed it last night and let it air dry, and I did say in the video that when I flat ironed it, I noticed that it got a little bit straighter. However, the crimps just come back, it seems like, even stronger the second time around from washing it. So this is beautiful hair. I didn't flat iron it. I just let it air dry. I didn't have time to you know straighten it and I just wore it out like this I did have the entire hair out but being that I was in the house the hair was getting in my face I decided just to put two cornrows and put it back so I have a cornrow here and one here and really simple to do you just need to leave some of your own actual leave out and you got yourself a cornrow girls so just some new things I will be doing some new wigs um cheap cheap wigs um synthetic wigs um, along with other product reviews, but I did get some things in the mail today by Mod Model Model, which is their, they sent me five wigs. Um, a couple of them are the same because I just chose different colors. So this here I have, it's called Style Number 8. It's the clean cap, um, wig, and this is Style Number 8. I got it in a color 430 and a color number 2. So it's super short. I'm going to do that really soon. Also, I got this one here in two different colors. This is called, um, let's see if I can see the box, see what it says, Jenna. And I got it in the color that the model is wearing, which is this color here. And also a color number two as well. So I just wanted to show different concepts of how to style with different ways, what it'll look like in different colors, some ways you can't wear to the office place in different colors. So, And the last one I just got one of, and this is in the color burgundy. Well, no, the models were in burgundy, but I chose uh, color 203, F OF203, which to me right about now is looking like a real shitty-ass color. Um, yeah. It got like, oh, I don't know about this color. If you guys can see that up close. It looks kind of shitty to me. It looks like they threw in all kind of different color strands of hair. What they had left. The leftover wig. Okay? The leftover wig. Mm. <laughs> Maybe I should have got it in burgundy. But anyway, so that one is called JC. And I'll be doing those really soon. Um, well, along with that, I do have a couple new units up available for sale on video units. Available for sale on Going With The Wind Wigs at Webly.com. Video units are units that I've worn for 15 to 20 minutes to do a review for, which is expensive hair, and I sell it for super cheap. Just because I have enough wigs, and I really don't, you know, need so many wigs like that. But, yes. So, anyway, so if you have a real talk situation that you would like for me to address, you can always send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Make sure to put in the subject line, real talk. And if you'd like to change the name of your characters in the video, meaning yourself, you don't want to be known as Janet, but you want to be known as Stacy, then you can go ahead and do so. And just let me know that in the email. Other than that, then I'll have to think of a name. And nine times out of ten, you'll probably be named after some wig that I've already reviewed. So, let's get into this real talk. So this one is going to be a long one, and even she stated, hey April, this is a long one. I wish I did have a drink, but I read it and it's a good email. And she's very um, well-spoken, too. I have been watching you for years and love your channel. For the sake of the video, you can call me Tracy. I am recently separated from my husband of 13 years with whom I have two children. My husband and I met in the military. I got pregnant after being together for a year, and we were living together before our son was born. So our life together moved extremely fast. We went through a lot of rough times together over the course of our marriage, but I always felt like there was something missing. 
I never felt like we had an emotional connection or that my husband respected me in our relationship. At first, I thought it was just because you, we were young, but as the years went on, I still never felt like I could trust him or that he really loved me. I made the mistake of staying because for the kids and not wanting to disrupt their life and way of living. I always had to deal with the fact that he lived by so many double standards. He didn't believe males and females could only be friends, but always managed to have plenty of female friends from work that he would clo be close with. He went through this phase of going out and coming home 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning and thinking he didn't owe me an explanation about where he had been all night. I would tell him all the time that he would treat me... He, I would tell him all the time that he would treat a bum on the street better than he did me. I did so much for this man over the years. So many selfless, <clears throat> excuse me, so many selfless things, but never felt like I got anything in return. So about four years ago, into our marriage, I cheated. I did it because I just didn't think he even cared, so I jumped at the first man to show me some attention. Then we separated. Long story short, he suspected something was up, confronted me about it. Of course, I denied it, and after some time, we decided to put that behind us and try to fix our marriage. Well, things were good for a couple of years, but we still had heated fights about other things. We often fought over him complaining that we didn't have sex enough, that it wasn't how he liked it. But most of the time, he was only out to get his jollies. I started devising, I started devising ways to make sure I got mine, because he never seemed to care if I climaxed or not. I felt like I was having sex with a teenage boy. He showed little interest to go out and do things with me and the kids. Everything had to be on his time. Both of us worked and had good jobs, but any time we got into an argument, he would bring up how he works overtime and made more money to support us. How he did more in the relationship, according to him. Eventually, we started living separate lives. He had his friends and I had my family and the kids. I would take them to my parents' house and we would stay the weekend while he was home doing whatever entertained him. Now, to give a little background info about my husband, we'll call him Mike. Mike is very loud, rude, and opinionated. He has always done things that hurt my feelings and just brushed me off as being a crybaby or just nagging. I have always told him that he shows me no respect and that has always been a problem with him. I hate when my phone rings when I'm in the middle of something. <clears throat> now where was I? He has always done things that hurt my feelings and just brush me off as being a crybaby or just nagging. I have always told him that he shows me no respect and that he has always been that has always been my problem with him. I have never really trusted him because of the way he would treat me and the things he has done in the past, but I always tried. I wasn't the type to accuse him of cheating every time he stepped out of the house, but even if I did think something, I would ask, and if he said no, I believed it. I thought that was what a wife was supposed to do, even if I didn't believe it in my gut. So about three years ago, I met this guy at my job. We'll call him Joe. Joe is married but separated for two years and living in his own home away from his wife the entire time. He would come over frequently and we sparked an instant and amazing friendship. I wasn't attracted to him, although he was nice looking although he was nice looking with a nice build. But I loved his personality. I could speak freely around him and could talk about anything. We would sometimes go out to lunch, but it was never just the two of us. After about a year, I switched jobs and didn't really keep in contact with Joe. We would send the, hey, how you doing text every couple of months and maybe had lunch once or twice. That was until our friendship picked back up in 2014. He wasn't working one day and invited me to come over to his house. I went over and we had a great time just talking like we always do. This led to us talking and seeing each other on a regular basis. He essentially turned into my best friend and we did start sleeping together. We talked often about our troubled marriages and him being a true friend, he never, bad, he never bad talked to my husband or our relationship and always gave advice from a friend's standpoint. Fast forward to January of this year, 2015. Mike finds out, Mike being her husband, Mike, my husband, finds out from looking through the phone bill that I have been talking to Joe. He asks me about it and calls Joe. We both say it's nothing, just a friendship, and Mike believes us. I start to get suspicious about my husband because he never looks through my phone and starts to think that he is hiding something of his own. I didn't say anything because I don't want him to think I'm trying to take the heat off of me. The month before all of this, <clears throat> the month before all of this, I had started getting restricted calls to my phone 
The caller would never speak and called about once a week. Then one day I came home on my husband's day off to find every caller ID had been cleared, which was odd because we never delete those. And I found that someone tried to use star 60 for a number when I checked the redial. The fights about Joe continue for months. Every week my husband is asking me a new question, telling me that I am not conducting myself as his wife. No man just wants to be friends with me. Everything you can think of he is doing. He even called my parents a number of times telling them to talk to me and sharing parts of our life that I would never share with them. I told my husband that I didn't want to work things out because during one of the previous fights he yelled out he wants a divorce. This wasn't the first time he had said that, but it would be his last. So he spends every day trying to say that this is all my fault, that I should just cut Joe out of my life. But I swear, April, something inside me could not let Joe go. My husband even went as far as to put my things in trash bags, put them in the garage while our son was home, called me at the nail shop and told me to come and get my shit. Then texted Joe and told him to come get me and my things. Well, to my husband's surprise, Joe did just that. When my husband told me to leave, I spent a few nights at my parents' house, but soon after he came to me as a friend, Joe came to me as a friend, gave me the spare key to his house, and let me stay there when I needed to. This man was there for me in ways that words can't describe. In May I had to go in May I had to go to my old home to stay with our kids while my husband went to Vegas. The night he is packing his things to leave, we are joking and laughing upstairs with his brother-in-law and his phone rings with a woman's face on it. I tell him to answer and he confesses to it being a co-worker he has been sleeping with. Keep in mind, this co-worker accidentally called our home phone in January and said she had the wrong number. I called her back from that same number and she answered. I asked her if she was trying to reach Mike and she said no. A bunch of lies. So my gut was right. My husband was checking up on me because he had dirt of his own. While in Vegas, he comes clean about sleeping with her, but claims that he stopped. Then in December, he stopped in December. He stopped sleeping with her in December because he wanted to focus on his wife. Hmm. Needless to say, I was in my own apartment by June 1st. Mike still contacts me trying to fix us, all while now dealing with the other woman that he says I forced him on because I keep rejecting him. I have no plans to repair my marriage because I feel like this all happened so I can finally leave. I plan to file for divorce once we have separated for the required year, which will be in March. My problem now is that Joe and I have serious feelings for each other. This man is everything I could have asked for in a partner without even trying. I always felt a strong emotional connection between us, which is why we are such great friends. I love spending time with him and we are always together. My husband tore me down as a person, but he makes me feel like a queen. But Joe makes me feel like a queen every day. So do you think I am wrong for keeping Joe in my life and developing a relationship with him? Hmm. So. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Tracy has been married to her husband for 13 years. Well, yeah, 13 years, her husband Mike. And Mike is just, to me, Mike seems like a male chauvinist. Doesn't show her no respect, doesn't really take her word or value her her feelings and opinions and things of that nature. Doesn't spend time with her, has been sleeping with somebody at the job place. Meanwhile, um, Miss Tracy has met someone at the job place, but, you know, they were only friends, and their friendship just became stronger and stronger. And is she wrong for wanting to be in a relationship with Joe? First of all, Tracy, you don't even got to ask me that or anybody else. Never worry about what somebody else thinks about what you do and what you want. Here's my thing. You can ask Tom, Dick, and Harry, Mary, Sue, and Trisha how they feel about your relationship. There's six people. Out of the six... Two of them might say, no, girl, don't do it. And the four of them might say, go on, girl, do it. But at the end of the day, it really don't matter how many agreed and how many disagreed. It matters what Tracy wants and what Tracy feels, how you feel. You can't go around pleasing everybody and doing things in the eyes of everybody else. Because if you continuously do things in the eyes of everybody else to get everybody else's opinions, to get everybody else's satisfactory, then what about Tracy? Because I'm pretty sure that your husband don't give a damn about sleeping with the woman. He said you forced him on her because you rejected him. Uh, rejected their, your relationship to get back together. 
Man, please, ain't nobody force you on no fucking woman. You've been doing that. You've been there, done that. That's why you were out to 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning and don't want to answer to your whereabouts. That's you. Nobody forced you but your nasty, dirty, dick ass. Bottom line. So, do you really think he has any regards to what anybody else thinks of him fucking with some bitch on the side while he's still married to you? Or some bitch on the side while y'all are divorced or separated? He don't care about what other people are thinking. You know what I mean? He done went to Vegas with the bitch and had you come over to the house and take care of the kids while he was gone. Please, that man don't care about nobody but himself. Now, if he don't make you feel like a woman and he don't cherish you and he don't respect you and he don't love you like you need to be loved and you're not eager or, eager or able to talk to him about certain situations, why even bother to worry about fixing anything about your marriage with him? And why even worry about what anybody else thinks? Because if you got this man over here that's been with you for 13 years and acts like a fucking jackass, but then you got somebody over here on the opposite side of you who doesn't act like a jackass and treats you like golden, girl, please, goodbye, Felicia. Bye, Felicia. Okay? To the husband. Because sometimes that shit happens. Shit fucking happens, okay? And we all know my story. Been there, done that, divorced. Been married for... Well, I'm divorced now, but I got married in 2004 and got divorced in 2015. So I was married for 11 years, but I was with that person for 16, 17 years. So it's the same scenario. We got two kids together. You want to drink and do dumb shit, you know, cheat it. I'm with somebody else that I loved since day one. And it was my, my, not even my mistake, but you know what I'm saying? I loved somebody else. I did love my ex, but I loved somebody else at the same time. And I, it's hard to keep yourself um, fooled a lot. You know what I'm saying? Meaning, like, for all those years that I was married, in my heart, I still cared for my husband, but I still cared for somebody else, too. Um, but we lived separate lives, and we had our own families and things like that. We were all both married. At the time. So things happen. Shit happens. And you never know when you're going to have an opportunity. Or you never know when the next person is going to come along. That's going to make you feel like that last person did. If the last person made you feel so good inside and out. Inside and out. And just made you smile. And just be so happy that the day is going on. And you see them. And you get all warm feeling when you see their text message. Or hear their voice. Girl, please, there's not a lot of men that can do that to people, to women, okay? I'm just saying. Now, I'm going to say this. I'm fortunate because, shoot, mine do. And we live together. I did say earlier, like a, earlier when he came home, um, like about a month and a half ago, that I don't know how this is going to work out because I don't really like living with nobody because I don't have patience and I ain't got, I ain't got patience, okay? And I just can't be bothered. Well... Needless to say, it is going very well. Um, you know, we had a little argument. Sometimes you got to have a good argument just to be able to hash it out and see where one person's head at is in the other person. So that way y'all don't be clashing. So, but you know what? That's my, that's my boo. He is my boo. I swear. I love that man to death. For real. But anyway, back to um, Tracy. I don't think you need to ask anybody's opinions and thoughts about how they feel about you and Joe, okay? Because the next bitch ain't worried about it, and neither is your husband. We live once. Life is short. And nobody wants to grow old alone. I know at a time in my life, I felt like I did because I was just so fed up with my relationship with men. I just was fed up. And so when I first got here... Um, you know, I dated a couple guys, but I didn't even date them, you know what I'm saying? I basically was acting like a boy, you know what I'm saying? Getting what I wanted and out. Like, after I was done with you, I was done with you. Like, goodbye. And it wasn't that it was crappy. It's just that I really didn't have it in my heart to be bothered with anybody. I didn't want any strings attached. I didn't want any commitment. I just didn't want to feel vulnerable anymore to any man. And I just didn't want to get sucked in. My feelings get hurt again. So it was so hard for me to even open up to the person that I'm with again. Like, you know, I gave him a run for his money. and But you know what? He still kept coming back. So, hey. But... You know, you live once and nobody wants to grow old alone. And I said I, I wouldn't care as long as I have my kids. I don't need nobody. But that's a lie. That was just the anger and the hurt inside of me that made me feel like, oh, please. I don't need no man. I'd, be, I'd rather be by myself for the rest of my life. 
bitch please okay like for real who the fuck want to be alone by themselves for the rest of their goddamn life i'd have been a miserable old bitch at 80 making wigs on youtube talking about hey okay no everybody needs a, a a companion okay i don't care if it's the same sex the opposite sex what have you everybody needs a companion don't nobody want to grow old alone however don't mean you gotta open your legs to every time thinking harry to find a fucking companion so this is what i'm getting to tracy you found one and y'all became the best of friends in the beginning which is a beautiful thing and y'all can connect in levels that you were not able to connect with your soon-to-be ex-husband so i would say give that man your heart and don't worry about what nobody else thinks it's time for tracy to be happy when's the last time you happy you happy whenever you around him and the way you spoke of him in this email and the way you spoke of your husband in the email lets me know that you are not in love with your husband nor do you really want to have anything to do with his opinionated egotistical self-hating ass He's a very, very self-centered person, it seems like to me, because it's all about him. And if you pushed him onto the other woman, then thank God, let somebody else have your old troubles. Because it's time to sweep that shit under the door. Ugh, or fuck it. I was going to say under the rug, but sweep his ass out the fucking door and out of your life. No worries. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes a relationship runs its course, and it seemed like... It, it ran its course a very long time ago. And a lot of women stay because of the kids. They stay in a relationship, the marriage, because of the kids. I can say I did the same thing. Um, even though he wasn't no breadwinner, he really wasn't no role model like that either with his drinking and driving, drug selling ass. But I stayed because those were my kids' father. And I wanted them to have both parents. However, you really can't have both parents sometimes in a home because if it's chaos and animosity, all you're going to do is have your children or child grow up with both parents and that child be miserable and see things and hear things that they really don't need to see and hear at their young age. And in the end, sometimes that makes them a bitter person towards the opposite sex. So, yeah, it's nice to grow up with both parents in a home. But you know what? Sometimes that's just a fairy tale. That's a fucking book. A story waiting to happen you know I didn't grow up with both parents for maybe a year or so out of my life I did however I love both my parents and I would rather see them apart than together because it just is what it is you know what I mean and I know for my kids sake that I stayed for them but finally I decided I gotta leave for my kids sake too because they don't need to see this bullshit, and they don't need to be a part of it. So never stay for your kids, okay? Stay for reasons that are for your own positive reasons, not for no kids or no money, because some people stay for money in a relationship. That's just greed. And if you can't make it on your own, then what the fuck are you going to do? Rely on a person that's going to make you miserable for the rest of your fucking life and live like that? I'd rather be broke every fucking day and happy away from somebody that made me miserable. I'm just saying. I'm just fucking saying. So Tracy, never worry about having to explain anything to anybody. You don't know any you don't know anybody no explanation of who you want to be with, where you want to be with them with, if you want to live with them, if y'all want to get married. You don't own no nobody, nobody no explanation, okay, of what you want to do, how Tracy is. You're a grown ass woman. And if is this relationship is for you and it makes you feel good, then I say go for it. Because like I said, you never know when an opportunity, and it's really not even an opportunity, but you never know when Mr. Right is going to come along that fulfills your every want and desire. Okay? But just don't be a hoe about it. That was just a little joke. Because some women feel like you can, give a, you can find Mr. Right with some pussy, but it doesn't work like that always. Okay? It just doesn't. So let Tracy know what y'all think. I think she should stick around with Joe because... He make her happy. And ain't nothing wrong with being fucking happy. Now this one here is a little bit long too. Not as long, but we are going to get into it because I wanted to get this one going. Because this one right here, girlfriend, are you blind? Hi, my name is um, Nita. You can call the guy in this email, Dot. Early, earlier this year, I had my eye on this guy named Dot on Facebook. We went to high school together but never talked. We exchanged numbers after a few inbox messages. We hit it off really quick. He was so cool and sweet. We talked every day about everything. And after a week of talking, his birthday came up. And we met up after the club. 
We did have sex. The sex was good. We continued to talk every day. We would even meet up after work to have sex. I started to catch feelings for him to where I wanted a relationship. I asked him why he didn't want to be in a relationship. He stated, I just can't put a title on something. I want to get to know someone first. I understand why he said that, but I felt like that was an excuse. Months passed by and we were still not a couple. We went out twice within the first four months. I would go to his house and we would chill and have sex. I would make sure he ate, helped him with his baby mama drama, and even got him an interview for a new job. I was doing girlfriend things. I started to distance myself because I felt like I was putting in more effort than he was. Dot was the first dude I vibed with on all levels of a relationship since my split with my son's father four years ago. So once that happened, we started acting funny. He st so excuse me. So once that happened, Dot started acting funny. He would ignore my phone calls and text messages. So after two weeks of ignoring, of him ignoring me, he responded to me. We got into an argument about how I've been acting. He stay he stated to me, "You get what you dish out. I'm not about to put in effort to spend time with someone who can't make time for me." I cried after our conversation because my feelings were hurt. I really did care about him and wanted to be with him. Fast forward to a month. He hit me up and was like, hey, I want to see you. I miss you. Being a dummy, I went to his house. We had sex and went back to not talking to each other again. I would text him and get no response. Call him, no answer. This situation kept happening until August. Now, mind you, in September, I hit him up to see how he was doing and let him know I missed him. His response was, I know you better I know you better been hitting up the gym since you talking about you miss me. Now I did gain some weight due to my to me being depressed. I cursed his ass out. Now it's October. We met up again to do the usual sex and chill. We went out to breakfast on sweetest day. I'm not really sure what the sweetest day or two sweetest day. Since then I haven't spoke with him. I texted a few times, but I got no response. I still care about him. I have been holding on to this little hurt for a while. I have been able I haven't been able to date because I have so much hatred in my heart for for men right now. How do I re recover <clears throat> how do I recover from this disappointment? Loved confused. So Nita is basically she's hooked up with somebody from Facebook that she um she knew from school. They never talked in school, but now they've exchanged numbers. Every time they go, they chill at his house or whoever house, and they just fuck. Okay, so they went out twice within the four months. He doesn't want a relationship because he doesn't put titles on things. He needs to get to know the person. So after giving him so much of the coochie, he finally decides not to respond to phone calls or text messages. Two weeks go by, and he's ignored her for two weeks, and. He finally gets in touch with her, saying he's missed her, and things of that nature, come over, blah, 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 you know. And it just, just keeps going on and on. He'll start speaking, I miss you and fuck, miss you and fuck. But the last situation, he told her she better have been hitting up the gym because if she missed him, she better be hitting up the gym. What the fuck is that supposed to mean, dude? Like, you think you all that, some bitch gotta be perfect Coke bottle body shape? Nigga, please, you ain't even all of that, okay? If you were all of that, then you wouldn't even have to be fucking chasing down no female pussy, okay? And talking about, I miss you, won't you come over? Because if you were all of that, you'd have pussy lined up at the fucking door. You wouldn't want to have to call somebody and lie to them to get some pussy. You'd have some lined up at the door as soon as you open that motherfucking door. There is a bitch that was hitting the gym ready to hit your ass. Okay, so let's just say, Dot, you're really not all that. Now, Nita, you ain't all that smart, neither. Because the nigga keep calling you over, talking about, I miss you, and y'all fucking. You went out twice within four months. He don't want a relationship with him, with you. He dissing you, and every time you see him, he's just about getting some pussy. But you fail to realize that. What do you miss? The dick? There are plenty of options or alternatives for missing the dick, which is these 10 things that are on your hands, okay? Also, you can get yourself a vibrator, which is sold just basically anywhere. Amazon.com and eBay sell them shits too, okay? Um, or you can go to an adult store, watch some porn, and play with yourself. Don't be that fucking horny to where you gotta humiliate yourself over some fucking dick. Like, it ain't that serious. Because he's helping you humiliate yourself by giving you the dick and only wanting to fuck with you when he gets horny. But you fail to see that. 
you want to build a relationship with somebody that don't want a relationship with you. He don't want a relationship probably with any female. All he want to do is slide in it and slide out and slide on his fucking way out the door onto the next bitch. This is what it seems like to me. You're only fucking. Where did y'all go in two months? Y'all went to eat? Okay. You went to eat after y'all finished fucking. Well, that was very nice of him to take you out and get you something to eat and then send you on your way. Well, that was so fucking nice of him. Mm-hmm. But you miss him? What I'm trying to do figure out is, what do you fucking miss? And you're hurting. Now, I can understand we all gravitate to a certain type of people. However, it seemed like you fell for him only because his dick game was good. He really didn't give you much of interaction like that, meaning take you out. He didn't want to wife you. You were doing the girlfriend things. However, he did not consider you to be a girlfriend. And yes, we all go through a phase in our lives where we are heartbroken because we've loved someone and it's not going to plan. It's not working out like how we expected it to work out. Um, I've been there plenty of times. You know what I'm saying? Yes, me. I've been there. I've been heartbroken. I know y'all probably like, April, you? Yes, me, girls. Me. <laughs> um, but you... I don't know. I think I have like this huge shell wall built up to where I just don't allow any man or anybody get in my space to where I feel like they're going to hurt me emotionally and scar me emotionally. You know, I will shun you off before I even allow you to get that close to me if I feel like you are out to get me in some ill-mannered way. And that's just me. Um... I build up a wall. Sometimes I'm very cold, even to my, my, my man, because I just really don't want to take the chance of being hurt emotionally again. But everybody goes through trials and tribulations when it comes to a relationship, and we all get heartbroken. There are some that are fortunate that never have been heartbroken, and bless their souls, but there are some that have hit reality, that have reality pavement, and gotten fucking struck real hard when it comes to heartbroken. And it just takes time, you know? Like I said, it takes sometimes longer for others. And don't let this jackass ruin your time of finding real happiness and real love. He's not the one for you. This little nigga is a trick nigga who is really not the one for you. All he want to do is give the dick up and then go about his business. And if you can't see that, sweetheart, you really need to open up your eyes and realize he is not what you are meant to be with. Okay? He just want a shorty to who he can fuck. And you were that, but you kind of got entwined and the dick took over. Kind of like hypnotized your ass and made you want to connect with him even more as in a relationship. So, I get it. Sometimes the dick can be really powerful. It can, and so can pussy. However, when a man sees a woman so vulnerable and so into him and chasing after him and shit like that, they do sh more shit just to fuck with you because they might have some type of feelings for you, but they want to see how far they can dangle your string. You know what I'm saying? And it's sad to say that, but it's true. Women do it too. I've done it many times where, okay, I like you and I know you really like me, but I'm going to act like I don't really want to fuck with you like that. And I'm going to just dangle your little string. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm going to get what I want to get and that's that. And I really don't want to fuck with you like that. And when they see, like when I would see that, that would make me fuck with you even more, meaning fuck with you mentally even more. Like, oh, yeah, he wanted, hmm, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Or he keep feeding you more dick or feeding you more lies, feeding you bullshit, and you just going along with it. And then he'll cut you off for two weeks and not call you or respond to your text messages, and then you'll call him back. Let me fucking tell you something about that, Nita. If you don't fucking call me or text me or respond to my shit in two weeks and we've been fucking, nigga, you won't be fucking me no more, okay? If I call you like three times and we're in a relationship and you don't call me to fuck back, I'm not going to keep calling you because I don't play myself like that. Um, You got like a few times to not answer and I won't fucking call you anymore. And then when I speak to you, because you'll have to call me, I'll be nonchalant about the whole shit and be like, yeah, whatever, because that's just me. But here's the thing, if I wasn't with the person I'm with and you didn't call me for two weeks and then you wanted to call me back 
two weeks later, be like, oh, I miss you, come up here. I'd be like, man, why is you even calling my phone? Don't call this number no more. Niggas that do shit like that, if they, if you fucking them and they don't call you back for weeks at a time and ignore you, then that is a fucking strong sign that tells you you are nothing but a booty call, okay? A non-relevant factor to this motherfucker, okay? If he's ignoring your text messages, he's not responding to anything for two weeks, and then he calls you and it's like, hey, I miss you, won't you come over? That right there lets you know, bitch, open your fucking eyes because you ain't nothing but a booty call. This nigga does not want really much to do with you, but get between your legs and then go about his business. Okay, I'll be damned if you gonna go two weeks without fucking speaking to me. Nigga, I didn't say you gotta be on the phone with me every fucking day, all day long, but at least have the fucking common courtesy and fucking show some interest so that we can keep this shit going. If not, then keep it stepping and don't never fucking call again. That's just me. Don't motherfucking can call me in two weeks, bitch. Don't ever call me the fuck again. I'm just saying. I will delete your number or what I will do is when you call, because I'll keep your number in there so I can ignore your call. Or when I or when I answer, be like, who's this? And it'll be like, such and such. Who? Oh, what's up? I ain't gonna sound all desperate because the nigga called me after two fucking weeks. Stop calling the nigga and texting him and worried about how the fuck he doing, okay, Nita? Dot ain't worried about your ass, so stop worrying about what the fuck he doing. You have to, and I'm going to say this, and I don't mean to sound cold, but you have to get the fuck over it. Because the nigga don't give a fuck about you. You will have to get the fuck over it and move on. You ain't got to be fucking dating nobody because I really don't feel like you in time are ready to date anybody just because of your actions and reactions to the breakup or not even the breakup because y'all was never together. But your reactions to the way he's treating you, you getting depressed about it, you gaining weight about it, you, you hating on all men right about now. I get it. Like, I've been there too. I've been there too where I've hated on all men and sometimes I still am that way except for the one that I'm with. You ask me anything about a man, and I would tell you in a heartbeat, they're fucking dogs, they're dogs, they're dogs. But sometimes you got to give them the benefit of the doubt. However, give him the benefit of the doubt and doubt, <laughs> okay? Because you keep giving him the benefit of the doubt, but don't anymore. He's not worth your time and effort. But he's putting you in a stage where you ain't even functioning correctly. Leave this nigga alone because he's obviously not too concerned about Nita. And stop worrying about dating somebody right now. I did say that nobody wants to grow old alone, and we don't. However, we don't want to grow old with a jackass and be fucking miserable. You know, heal yourself and take time for Nita and stop worrying about some low-life scumbag because the way he's acting, he's acting like a low-life scumbag. And stay off the internet trying to meet niggas on Facebook and shit and Twitter and Instagram because them niggas are some fake-ass profile niggas who don't have shit else to do but sit on fucking social media and try to get some free pussy when they need to take their ass to work and take care of their baby mamas or whatever kids they got. What the fuck is going on? You know what I mean? Social media is the worst place to meet somebody some people love to meet people on dating sites or whatever like yeah yeah okay yeah there's uh 10 out of 100 that get lucky with that shit okay the rest of these niggas be lying through the gate just lying okay straight up lying and yeah you might have known him from school but y'all didn't even speak then so if y'all didn't even speak then and he didn't even speak to you then what makes you think he got a real interest in you now y'all a little more grown so yeah he want to hit it and quit it but y'all was in school. He really didn't have an interest in you in school. So what makes you think that he's going to have a real interest with you right now? I don't know. But me, I analyze a lot of things. And I put a lot of thought into a lot of things. If this nigga wasn't talking to me when he was in school. And didn't even know I really existed. Or seen me and knew I existed. But wasn't even fucking showing me no. Hey, what's up, Kathy? Oh, hey, how you doing, Michael? Oh, yeah, what's up, Kathy? He ain't showing me like I exist. But ignored me, didn't say nothing to me, but I was feeling him in school, but he didn't even say one word to me. What the fuck makes you think that he gonna want to say one word to you now? Like if it were me, and that was me in my shoes, you best believe it. I ain't speaking to that nigga when we grown up, please. Hmm. Fuck out of here. And if you try to say something to me, I'll look at you like you got four motherfucking heads and be like, nigga, are you out your rabbit ass mind? You ain't speak to me in school. Don't start speaking to me now. Shit. Fuck out of here. That's just, that's just April's point of view. Sometimes I get a little bit out of control with, with people in general, but I'm really like that. Like, if you don't speak to me, never spoken to me, and then you see me out in public. Because I've seen females do that to me, that I've grown up with. Be all speaking, never spoke to me, never fucked with me when we was in the projects. They still in the projects. Or it doesn't even matter. We never was in the projects. But we go back there. 
you ain't fucked with me, never spoke to me, gave me a look, never said nothing to me. Now when I'm in the projects and you see me with my moms and them, hey girl, what's up? My mother be like, you ain't even gonna say nothing? I don't speak to that bitch. And I mean, I would say it like that. My mom would be like, oh God. Or you know, hey girl, what's up? I see you do. We ain't never been friends before. Why you wanna be my friend now? That'd be me, okay? And if it's a dude, I got all the red flags up. Um, bowls, whistles, everything, smoke, everything. Nigga, you ain't speak to me then in school. Why the fuck you want to talk to me now? Like, you are just not even important to me. Let me tell you something, Nita. The nigga don't give a fuck about any females. And if he... I guarantee you, you're not the only piece of pie he's getting. However, you need to put this in your brain stem and think about you. Don't worry about no damn other relationship. Worry about getting yourself better and worrying about finding the right one. And don't even worry about finding the right one right now because the right one will come along at the right motherfucking time. And until then, get needed together. And fuck Dot, he's not worth it. Hmm. So, on that note, that was two videos because they were long. I had to only do two. However, I will be doing three next week. I hope so, at least. But anyway, let Nita know how you feel as well as the first story below. And like always, if you're interested in weight, you can check out my website. If you're interested in one of your stories being hashed out on YouTube, then go ahead and send me an email. And I hope you guys have a great week and stay diva and divolicious. And I will see you on my next video.